men's health and aging. Uh, for those of you who are in the, uh, the book class workshop, I apologize for the redundancy here. But uh, as you no doubt all already know by now, is andropause is a complex hormonal uh, deficiency or insufficiency. And the issue is drawing that line for yourselves on what distinguishes sufficiency, insufficiency, and deficiency. Um, and that will be based upon uh, complaints of the patient, complaints of the, uh, the male patient, um, also um, what the dictums are in your legal medical uh, arenas. Um, but the importance is documenting as many of the complaints that they have, those who have the, uh, the book, you have all the charts and the questionnaires that we use. Um, document as much as you can. Um, classically, the deficiency syndrome starts at uh, fourth to fifth decade, and that's if you eliminate anyone with head trauma. If you start incorporating head trauma, I have a 21-year-old right now with depression and no libido, um, put them on HCG, and that was uh, good to start the process. Um, Clomiphene, 25 milligrams added to that, and then the coup de gras was a very, very low dose of testosterone, 20 milligrams once a week, and he is a 20-year-old again. Um, so some of the findings, uh, loss of, of well-being in 82%, which is a very large number, how you feeling, uh, and they're sort of like uh, apathetic. Um, joint aches and pains, stiffness in the fingers and hands, maybe a little bit of swelling, hot flashes, sleep disturbance, irritability, uh, reactivity. Um, you know, going out and buying a brand new Porsche or else uh, going and finding a girlfriend, these are all symptoms of uh, testosterone deficiency. Um, and that midlife crisis is what we call just, you know, 50 midlife life crisis, and we just said it was what it was, but it, there's a hormonal basis for it. Guys who get onto hormonal testosterone replacement, you see a change in their, in their, uh, in their mood, their, uh, um, they're more balanced, some of the terms that they use, more balanced. They're not as um, agitated or easily um, agitated or reactive. Um, this is uh, just numbers. Uh, in the United States, the study came out of 2004. This is uh, and it was of, um, yeah, review of medicine. Uh, men in the United States, 65 years of age and older, uh, projected to be over 14 million in 2000. They ex exceeded that, uh, with 31 million expected in 2030, with approximately 30 percent of men expected between uh, 16 and 7 years of age and 70% of that between 70 and 80 years of age uh, with deficiency of uh, bioavailable uh, testosterone leading to symptoms that are decreased libido, drop in energy. When we talk to the patients about energy, it's not energy for lighting a light bulb, but it's psychological energy, how alert they are, how they feel alive and vibrant, and physiological energy or physical energy where they say, I get up every morning, pop out of bed, and I want to go and run five miles. And you see the people with significant testosterone deficiency, they want to stay in bed, they've slept for eight hours, they wake up feeling fatigued. Um, you say, you know, let's go out to a movie or let's go out and do whatever. Their spouses say that, um, or significant other. And they say, nah, I'm feeling tired, I just want to stay home. Or else they get home and they, uh, after work, and they go right in front of the television, sit there as couch potato, which I know doesn't happen here. Because you guys, when you watch your, what is it, AFO or AFL, what is it? Yeah, AFL. I saw the other night the energy in the crowd when they were getting up there, losing, they were yelling and screaming, sorry for the loss, folks. But that kind of energy you want to maintain. And I see in patients, both male and female, females, when there's testosterone deficiency and you replace it, that energy comes back, that they go from being um, just warm to back to being in the game of life. And that's what you want to be part of, bringing them back there. Male hormone deficiency or insufficiency, um, need to uh, check free testosterone, dihydrotestosterone, uh, DHEAS, the sulfonated form, which is the active form. You want to look at the uh, levels of um, estrogen. Uh, for every molecule of estrogen, you've lost two molecules of testosterone. How's that? Well, one testosterone goes to become the estrogen, and then to counter that estrogen, you need to have another testosterone. So you have to watch this balance. 
Uh, excess sex hormone binding globulin in the past, uh, it was thought that sex hormone binding globulin uh, developed as a ligand or created a ligand which inactivated testosterone. Now we found that there's a secondary stat pathway uh, where uh, the combination of the um, sex hormone binding globulin and testosterone has its own pathway as well as uh, free testosterone connecting up to the uh, AR receptors on the wall. Concurrent uh, zinc deficiencies uh, can lead to a uh, predilection towards estrogen conversion and a decrease in testosterone. It's all, again, about balance. So laboratory testing, interpretation, treatment options, estrogen, uh, prostate cancer, which I think we had enough of earlier, alopecia hair uh, loss, how to protect from that, and then what happens with acne. Laboratory testing, um, this is the complete panel, which is uh, at ADL is like, the code is 55212, and free testosterone, dihydrotestosterone. Uh, you look at these uh, results in multi in multidimensional. First, there's the superficial, whether it's high or low, and then how they interact together, knowing that DHEAS is the precursor to um, testosterone down one pathway and the precursor to androstenedione dione down another pathway, and then the androstenedione dione goes to free testosterone, dihydrotestosterone, and then estrone. So what I've, like, moved into is instead of replacing everybody with testosterone, I'm doing a little study with just giving them a DHEA and seeing if the pathway really does work to see if they do convert it. And what's happened in the small population is it does, not in everyone, and those that have an inherent uh, enzyme block, they don't go all the way from DHEAS to androstenedione to the testosterone that's needed, and then you supplement with testosterone. It's the complex way of doing it, the simple way of doing it. If they're deficient in DHEA, deficient in testosterone, give them a little bit of both. Free testosterone uh, is calculated, so that means that um, calculated has been found to be up to 34% uh, variance in the results. Uh, so the best thing to do, or error from the actual results, so the best thing to do is use a laboratory so that that 34% potential error is still the same from the same lab as opposed to sending it to lab A, B, and C. So you'll have a consistent level of error. Um, uh, let's see. That will pass. This was a 2003 article on um, sensitivity. There was a 2001 article that set off the stage for testosterone being associated with metabolic syndrome. This is a 2003 article from UCLA um, where it talks about uh, insulin, the relationship between uh, insulin, uh, metabolic syndrome, and um, atherosclerosis or uh, endothelial dysfunction is the fact that um, Sugar is a damaging factor for the um, lining of the arteries, just like uric acid and cigarette smoke and trans fatty acids and homocysteine. Total testosterone is a measurement of all the forms of testosterone, so it doesn't really give you an accurate understanding of what's there. So I don't use total testosterone to monitor treatment or to um, be the means by which I treat. It's the free testosterone, dihydrotestosterone, and estrogen levels. Um, let's see. Uh, DHT is uh, converted to two forms um, by 5-alpha reductase 1 and 2. Um, topically applied testosterone converts 70% to uh, DHT. And uh, one study that I didn't include in here, uh, they pretreated the skin with uh, progesterone. I think it was 10%. Uh, I think it was 10% progesterone, and then they put on top of that the testosterone. They got adequate levels, and there wasn't as much DHT conversion. It appears that the progesterone suppresses the follicular 5-alpha uh, hydroxy or 5-alpha reductase. If you take uh, pregnenolone, uh, males take pregnenolone, uh, it is converted to progesterone and might suppress or decrease some of the uh, serum levels of 5-alpha uh, reductase. Use, making sure that uh, in the serum there is higher amount of free testosterone, that's why I don't usually use topical testosterone, because you want higher amount of free testosterone so you get central testosterone, because the brain is what controls the entire body, obviously, and you want that great effect in the brain so that pain decreases, so if you've got pain syndrome, um, so you have the energy, you wake up, you just feel much better. <clears throat> 